Hello there, this is an introduction to Pro Animate, and here it is down on the dock, just going to open it up. <sighs> okay, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the uh, program and the version first. So we go up to Pro Animate and click on about. Uh, as you can see there, it's version 1.90. Okay. So first up, how to take pictures. So you set up your camera. Um, as you can see here, I'm using a camcorder and you press the camera button and here it comes up. It's best to take about four pictures. Sometimes, you know, three will do. And you can, you, there's two views. You can view it all as one or as each individual shot. You can delete them when they're like this or you can condense them like that. Okay, so you've got some pictures here, and you're going to move it slightly, and as you can see, the, there's onion skinning, um, and that little slide bar at the side, you can control how much that happens. Um, so you can see exactly where your last shot was and line it up. So I'm going to do this very quickly, and just move him, and then take three pictures, move him again. Uh, you probably wouldn't want to move it that much, whatever you're trying to animate. Um, because it will look choppy, uh, but I'm just doing this quickly. So, yeah, there's Morph and he's falling over. I'm just gonna take that picture there. Yeah, okay, he's falling over there, so I'll, I'll leave it there just, um, just to show you how it works. So, scroll back to the beginning, press play, you can watch it through. Now, if you go up to edit, you can uh, import sound or other clips from other projects you've been doing. Um, so if you made something in one and wanted to put it into another, you could do that. Okay, so now I'm just going to open up uh, the project that we were working on just to show you what a finished project kind of looks like. Uh, so here's what we did uh, and I'm just going to show you some of the different special effects you can put in once you've finished shooting your movies ok so I'm just going to scroll to a bit where I can show you uh, show you exactly what I want to show you um, Yeah. ok while I'm here I'm just going to show you some of the different ways you can change the settings uh, so you can change the base frame rate which isn't that important really uh, if you're just doing something like this but if you're trying to do something really professional then you can do that uh, you can change what uh, what you're working in which again isn't really that important and auto save now you can uh, set your project to save every you know every few seconds or every couple of minutes I'm going to set it to never because I don't want to uh, save this project uh, as it is uh, because we've already saved the finished project. So, um, here you can change how good the images you capture are, whether they're lower quality or higher quality, but that affects the size. And then that's about the audio background colour, which again is very important for the time being. So, um, I'm just going to show you some of the effects. Now, if you go, uh, probably a shot like that would be good to show you with. If you go up to drawing, you can draw. If you click on the draw tab, you can draw over your image. So if you're in the circle there, um, when you use these, they often tend to go to the left. Uh, but you can, you can draw circles or squares, or you can do freehand. I'll just show you that in a second. Let's get rid of these. Uh, now you can draw freehand uh, by clicking on the pencil tool. Um, and this is good if you wanted to do um, like cartoon animation. Although uh, you're probably better off using a different program for that, but. Uh, here, if you've drawn a shape and you want to move it about, click on uh, the arrows and you can do that. 
uh, and then the other one changes uh, another part of it, which changes the line, so you can change what direction it's going in. You can also change the fill colour and the line colour, and you can uh, change the line width on the slider, and the end and join style. Now you can have a time lapse where it automatically captures pictures for you. Uh, and it will capture one every 30 seconds for you automatically. Uh, or every 30 minutes or however many seconds or minutes you want to set it for. So I would show you but uh, this is, just, you know, I think you can probably work that out by yourself. Okay, now then I'm just going to show you uh, one of the reasons that um, ProAnimate is different from something like PlayStop Motion you can, or Chroma Key through the program. Now, it's better if you use a bright colour uh, that contrasts more with whatever you're doing, but uh, I'm just going to use the brown of the table. As you can see, it's, uh, it's not very good, but then if you can change the tolerance, uh, you can see it's not quite as good as using a proper Chroma Keying system. But, you know, for something in program, it's quite good. You can fiddle around with the controls until you get it to the quality you want. Um, until you're happy with it. And then you can put in a background after that. So, yeah, I'll just fiddle around. If you go in map, it uh, puts it into negative. And you can mess around with the controls with that too. So, once you've done that, you can put a picture behind, only over the checkered grey and white area. However, so if that's not covering your whole thing, you won't see the picture over the whole background. Uh, I'll just show you now, uh, for the time being, just on the side. You can change that really easily. Um, so I'm just going to put in a picture of some clouds to make it look like the words are flying. There you go. Now, if that was over the whole screen, uh, obviously it would look a lot nicer. But um, just for the time being, I'll shape this. You can change the background scale so you can zoom in on the background, or you can zoom out, or you can blur it if it's a moving clip. And you can create some really good effects with your stop motion through that. And also, it saves on having to put in sets. So you can save a lot of time and effort and money not building sets anymore so that is one way to do things okay so basically that's just an overview and then you've got to export right now this is really handy it shows you the recommended um, what what each different size is recommended for using the little dots now if it's for a movie then I would choose the highest but then you've got um, they go down in size and the quality goes down with the size so if you save your if you export your project uh, however you want and then if you quit you just remember to save I'm not going to because I've made changes so that's basically it uh, thank you